And happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And it's so great that we can say that in person this year after uh, last year and uh, be together. Uh, I know there's still some of us watching online and want to welcome all of you as well. And uh, go ahead and be active and interactive in service and type out He is Risen uh, on the computers and uh, let everyone know you're uh, worshiping this Easter Sunday. And we're so thankful to be able to worship our Lord who is alive Uh, And this morning we begin a new series called Living the Resurrection. What does it mean to not only celebrate resurrection, but live it every day? And so we're going to follow along with the women who go to the tomb and uh, their scene ends with terror and amazement, but we see how God continues the work after that. So in our gospel reading from Mark, we'll focus on that. Uh, Also just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who uh, donated for the flowers to help beautify the sanctuary. It's just uh, alive and full of life here. Um, And we did want to mention anyone who donated, if you want to pick up a flower after second service or after uh, or tomorrow when the office is open, you can do that. Um, Any that are left over, we're going to bring to some of the local care facilities in the area. So wanted to mention that. Uh, And then next week, we're back to one service at 10 a.m., and we'll be continuing, like I mentioned, our new series, Living the Resurrection, looking at Thomas and how we see and how we believe in the Lord through all that's going on right now. So 10 o'clock, and we can uh, still continue to stream on Facebook or reserve in person. Also wanted to share, uh, we continue to uh, have opening hands opportunities, such as collecting for the food bank, so if you have any Uh, canned goods or uh, uh, even the paper bags or plastic bags. They can use all those. And there's a list of uh, most needed things in your bulletin. Also wanted to mention, if you're uh, feeling cooped up and need a chance to to get out and serve, you can do that with a landscape party on this coming Saturday to help beautify the grounds. And that starts at 9 a.m., so wanted to mention that. Also wanted to mention, for those at Wesley, I'll be uh, giving the online message there on April 25th. I got the, uh, the call from Inga that I'm in on the 25th, so uh, looking forward to being able to do that. It'll be one of the messages uh, from here uh, broadcast over the TV network. So let your friends at Wesley know that our pastor will be speaking on the 25th and tune in. Also wanted to share, we're taking a spring break from our Zoom Bible study, so we'll have the week off. Uh, then we'll start back up on the 14th at 7 p.m., so wanted to Uh, share that. And then finally, uh, next quarter's portals of prayer are available. I saw some of you pick them up as you came in here. Um, But if you need them dropped off, you can let us know, and it's just a great resource tool. So uh, with all of that said, we get to rise and we get to stand this morning and celebrate the resurrection. So let's do that as we begin with a call to worship. So let us rise and stand. And let us celebrate, friends, for the tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled away. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For three days he lay in that cold and lonely tomb. But God's love cannot be contained by anything, not even death. Thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our risen Lord. Death Death has has been been swallowed up in victory. victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, Where, O death, death, is is your sting? sting? Christ is risen. He He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Come, let us worship the risen Christ, his Father, and Holy Spirit this Easter. Amen. Amen. today, Alleluia. 
Hallelujah, indeed. And we pray, God the Father, creator of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. There are times, though, when we do not let the Lord reign in our lives, and rather we fall into sin and let it reign, and so we have to confess that. And so we confess, O risen Christ, we come come to to the the empty empty tomb. tomb. We We see see our our own sin. sin. We We see see our own tomb. tomb. We see our own emptiness. And we remember how we have treated other people, members of our family, friends, and neighbors. We also see how we have treated you. Lord, when we come to the empty tomb, we lay before you our pain, our sin, our emptiness, and look to you for resurrection hope. So take a few moments of silence, just lay before the Lord those things that you need to confess that he has placed on your hearts. Do not dwell on your wounds any longer. For Jesus has risen to heal you. He has risen to forgive you. He has risen to change us all and bind us together now. So rejoice and proclaim Alleluia. For all your sins are forgiven in the risen Lord, his Father, and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And as we listen to God's word for us this morning, now we get to celebrate what he has done. So you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign of the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord, we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11, and this is Paul writing. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve, After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was within me. 
Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now as response to the word, we sing out a hymn of praise. Alleluia, alleluia, hearts to heaven. for the gospel reading. The gospel reading is from Mark 16, 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the tomb, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting in the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay dim? But go tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And as we uh, have this series, Living the Resurrection, I thought it would be appropriate to have an Easter affirmation of faith. And so we'll say this today and we'll say it uh, every week throughout the series. So we'll get to know it very well by the end of uh, the series in seven weeks here. So with that said, let us declare our faith in the resurrection and reign of Christ. By, by his, his mighty power, power God, God raised from, from the dead, dead our, our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ and seated at his right, at right hand, hand in, in heaven, heaven, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, 
but also in the age to come. God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything, everywhere, and always. Amen. Amen indeed, and let us now sing out, I know that my Redeemer lives, and you may be seated. I know that my Redeemer lives, what comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my ever-living head. He lives, triumphant from the grave. He lives eternally to save. He lives all glorious in the sky. He lives exalted there on high. He lives to silence all my fears. He lives to wipe away my tears. He lives to calm my troubled heart. He lives all blessings to Let's start with a word of prayer. We praise you, O living, living Lord, that you are our Redeemer who lives. As you live this day, may we live in you. May we celebrate you. May we proclaim you. May we focus on you. Lord, may we lift your name up with all the churches globally around the world that celebrate you this day. May your gospel be what drives the church around the world to unite and share your love with all our neighbors. And so this day as we live the resurrection, guide the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts that they be pleasing to you and you alone, and keep and defend us from any temptation or distraction that would try to come up against us in this place or in our homes that we may focus on you and you alone, our risen Savior. In your name we pray. Amen. Have you ever been watching a movie and you watched along for a couple hours and it finally got to the last few minutes of the movie, you got to the ending and it happens and you go, that's it? Really? That's it? I invested all my time in this and this is the ending I get? Maybe you felt like that because something was left unresolved or it just plain didn't make sense. Well, this is sort of what happens to us in the Gospel of Mark. You see, almost all biblical scholars believe that the book of Mark ends with what we just read, that Jerry read in verse 8. This, that's on our screen. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. It can be easy with an ending like that to go, that's it? They were afraid? 
that's it? It feels like a dud of a firework that doesn't go off, doesn't it? It feels like a sputter instead of an explosion. And you would think that the resurrection calls for a big firework finale ending, wouldn't you? A big, widescreen, special effect kind of moment, one that says filmed in Technicolor, in high def, in 3D, in IMAX. In fact, we're not the only ones that thought that. Someone else did, and so they decided to add a longer ending on to the book of Mark. And if you pull out your Bibles this week, and you look at the book of Mark in the final chapter, you'll see in the last verses, uh, 9 through 20, it says this note about them. The earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have verses 9 through 20. And so we end with eight, we end with what's on the screen, and we start with this on Easter Sunday because we're starting a new series called Living the Resurrection. And in Living the Resurrection, we realize that with Jesus risen, with him being alive today, there's no exuberance that's too loud. I know we're reserved here, but we can really get wild if we want to. There's no expression of joy that's too over the top. There's no exercise of new life that can be shut down on Easter. Easter calls for excess, and it calls for joyful living. It does call for those fireworks, like we mentioned. With that in mind, though, how do we reconcile How do we reconcile the fireworks, the exuberance, the expressions of joy with the terror and the amazement that the women at the tomb had on that first Easter Sunday? How might their experience help us in living the resurrection? Well, I think to do this, we have to zoom out, to use another movie image, and look at the bigger picture of Mark that he's been painting with his gospel here. And one of the biggest characteristics in Mark's gospel is movement. One of the biggest characteristics in Mark's gospel is movement. If you read through the gospel, you'll see that he uses words like immediately, and it came to pass. It goes from scene to scene, quick cuts, if you will, that it's quick-paced and action-packed. And in verse 8, Uh, or in these eight verses that we had for our gospel uh, lesson, you'll actually see there's a lot of movement in it as well that Jerry read. In the first four verses, there was movement towards the tomb. Such phrases like, they bought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And in verse 2, they were on their way to the tomb. They were moving towards it, and Mark uses that language. We too, during Lent, have been moving towards the tomb. As we've been rending our hearts and claiming the promises of God, we have seen the journey going all the way back through the Old Testament and how Yahweh has moved his people to this place. And so too, in the season of Lent, we have moved our lives, we have moved our lives towards him towards sacrifice, towards a life of following after him. We are a people on the move. But where are we going to move as we are living the resurrection? Well, when we come to verse 8, we see a total change of direction. At the end of verse 8, it says, They went out and they fled. Like those fireworks we mentioned at the beginning of service, or at the beginning of the message, rather, it's as if they were exploded out of there, propelled out of there. And it's in this final verse that Mark finally slows everything down as if it's a slow motion scene. All the rest of his gospel immediately came to pass, but here in verse 8, just imagine as if you're seeing something, a freeze frame, if you will. It catches the women in mid-flight. It's as if their mouths are hanging open. They have that surprised look of terror on their faces and, and their arms are outstretched like some sprinter reaching out for the finish line. Their feet blurry in rapid uh, images of motion. 
They flee the tomb, and Mark snaps a photo for us, freezing the action, showing the women in motion. But why end? Why end with that shot? Well, in the midst of all that motion, there's actually some information in there, and here's a paraphrase of it from verse 6. The women arrive at the tomb, and they encounter a young man who says, you are no doubt looking for Jesus. And yes, they were. And since, as the young man admits, just Jesus was crucified, it would make sense to look for him in the tomb, in the cemetery. But he's not there. You just missed him, the young man says. They just missed him. Why? Because Jesus is on the move as well. Jesus is not motionless. Jesus is not lifeless. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is risen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the eternal life. Jesus is on the move. Jesus is the defeat of death. He was on the move, descending to hell, defeating Satan, and now was on the move because he had work to do. And the thing is, the women should have known this. Peter should have known this. Why? Well, let's go back and reread verse 7. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he said. Just as he said. Where was it that Jesus told them about what was going to happen? Well, if we do some movement back into the book of Mark, in chapter 14, 28, we come to this verse, and this is what Jesus says. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Now, in our movie terms, we would call this a spoiler. Jesus tells the ending. He says this is what's going to happen. He tells them where he is going to move. They, not, they might not have understood it at the time, but I can imagine the women in that moment when they heard the messenger say these words. I can imagine this is where the terror and amazement came to fruition. The words our rabbi spoke earlier, they're true. And now we have to get a move on it. He's gone. He's on the road to Galilee. He's going ahead of you, the young man says. So if they want to see Jesus, they have to get going. Because for some reason, Jesus didn't hang around to be encountered at the tomb. And so according to Mark, Easter morning is not about running over to where we think Jesus is and then wanting to sit down with him and have coffee and share stories. Easter morning is not about sitting down and having a party. It's about Jesus in motion. And it's about our being in motion, too if we hope to catch up to him, which is hard to think about over this past year when we've been stuck inside so much, but we're still people in motion. We're still people called to bring the motion of Jesus to others because Jesus was not there that morning because he had so much work to do. A dying world was in need of so much renewing grace, which only the resurrected Jesus could and still does give. This is a task that could not and cannot wait. Living the resurrection is a life of movement. And what we have to do is first go back to the rhythm of the gospel if we forget what this movement is like. And the ending of Mark's gospel gives us another reminder of that. And it all uh, revolves around where Jesus is heading. Jesus is risen, and we, too, are directed to Galilee. But in Mark's gospel, where is Galilee? What is it about Galilee? And for this moment, we have to go even further back in the book of Mark. If you were to open up Mark uh, to the very first chapter in verse 14, you'd come to this. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee. He went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. This is the first place he proclaims the good news after his ministry begins and John is put in prison. So Mark, using that ending of uh, 
16, 7 there. It might be his way of saying, now we have to move back to the beginning. We have to go back to Galilee and read the whole thing again. Now that we have been to the cross and understand what the Messiah was all about, we need to go back and read the gospel again. We need to hear Jesus' parables afresh, see his miracles anew in light of the resurrection. We need to reconsider Jesus' every word and act in the light of the cross and the empty tomb. Because only then will we see by the Spirit and understand the nature of the kingdom of God and the nature of that kingdom, which is grace. Grace. Grace upon grace. Grace is what living the resurrection is all about. The resurrected Christ is moving ahead of you into Galilee to show you once more how to live in that grace and how to proclaim the good news. He will meet you where you live. He's already there because he is ahead of you. So get moving. Get going. Or Easter will move on without you. That's what we do on Easter. We run to catch up. We run to find the one who has gone before us. The one who was raised for us. And the one who will one day move us all again from the tombs we are placed in to resurrect our lives of living the resurrection for eternity. As we recall our original question, that's it. We can expand on it. Why does Mark end things the way he does? Why this final puzzling image of bewildered women, silent in fear, saying nothing to nobody? Well, fear was certainly a, a, a reasonable and understandable emotion for these women to feel. Not only did something totally unexpected take place, it shattered reality. It changed everything. And the first people to encounter this mind uh, addling fact were uh, totally justified to feel afraid. Any other reaction would have been downright weird. But what about Mark leaving that way? What about that freeze frame of being there? Why the snapshot of this flight and terror not saying anything as Mark's final word? Well, what it does is it creates some tension. It creates a challenge for all of us. We see the silence, we see the fearful women and exclaim, but the gospel, it, it, it can't end in silence. That's, there's just got to be more to the story than this. The gospel can't end in silence. Yes, that's it. And Mark, he nods his head, looks at the reader, and says to them, yes, the gospel cannot end in silence. So what are you, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do? Well, we're going to move. We're going to move and not let the gospel end in silence. We are going to move into the terror and the amazement of this world We are going to speak and we're going to share expressions of joy and exuberance and be reminded that Jesus is alive. For he has overcome all that terrifies and astonishes with his grace, love, and resurrection hope this day, this Easter day, and every day. And then we're going to move into the Galilees around us. We're going to head out and we're going to be living the resurrection Why? Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia and amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, may you give us your resurrection strength. May we live in you to move in your gospel rhythm. May we go back into your word and and be reminded of what that rhythm looks like, that we might share it in a world that so desperately needs your rhythm because it's so scattered, so broken and hurt. And so, Lord, we just pray as we go forth to live the resurrection, that you would guide us, that you would keep us, that you would dwell with us, 
in all we say and do, living the resurrection. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to take some time to have uh, some musical reflection as we uh, reflect on how we're called to move in the rhythm of the gospel. Uh, and for those watching online, just want to uh, thank you so much for your continued uh, support through tithes and offers. You can do that through mail or through giving online. And for not only the people online, but everyone here in person, thank you so much for your prayers throughout the, the year uh, that it's been over the past year. So glad so many of you are back in person and so glad to see you. Uh, blessings to all of you, and let's continue to live the resurrection. God's peace and amen. Yes, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen. And at this time, we now come to our Lord in prayer, so you may rise or come whatever posture prayer is best for you in this time. Uh, and for those of you watching at home, uh, it's a good time to be typing out your prayer requests so we might be able to pray over them during the week. And also, uh, for those that watching at early service, we can uh, uh, aggregate those and pray for them over late service. So wanted to mention that as well. So... With that said, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In this Easter morning, we shout for joy because Jesus is alive and is in motion. He is bringing his resurrection life, hope, and grace to this world. Give us the same hope 
and joy as we go about this Easter season of living the resurrection. Break into moments of celebration and joy. Give us gratitude, the impulse to share, and a spirit of grace and understanding. Resurrect, renew, and revive our spirits. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we give thanks that we celebrate your resurrection with the global church around the world. Make proclamations of he is risen be made in every language and in every nation. We pray with all our brothers and sisters for your resurrection to transform and uplift all communities around the globe. We also pray that all the worshiping, whether in person or in their homes, would be safe and secure in your strength and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for church workers who have worked hard on making all the Easter plans of their churches come to fruition. Give rest to all the administrators, musicians, youth workers, custodians, pastors, and all who serve churches. Minister to all of them with your new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we give thanks this day for all our families and friends. Give all who are celebrating Easter together your joy and thankfulness, especially since so many of us were not able to do it last year. Keep our gathering safe and full of happiness in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we pray for anyone who is seeking new life and hope this day or are just plain curious what Easter is all about. Kindle the hearts of those who do not, who do not yet believe that you have conquered sin and death. Grant them faith to know that you live to bestow health and salvation upon them forever. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to lift up those who are suffering from COVID-19 or have lost loved ones be because of it. We especially lift up to you the Kaler family on this day as they continue to recover from and just ask for full healing uh, for them, that you would give them your strength and joy on this Easter. And give us all continued strength to care for those who are hurting, to continue to look out for our neighbors and we pray over all the doctors, nurses, and all in hospitals as they continue to fight against this terrible disease. And so, Lord, resurrect, renew, and revive your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of new possibilities, break into our relationships with resurrecting power. Where these relationships are vibrant and life-giving, nurture and sustain them where they are marked by memories of hurt or current misunderstanding, refresh them with forgiveness and reconciliation. Where they are neglected or taken for granted, open eyes to the greatest gift we offer each other. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In God of new opportunity, Break into the governance of your world with resurrecting power. Stir the minds and hearts of leaders to work for justice and understanding. Bring wisdom, compassion, and cooperation to all in authority. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of new life, break into situations of illness, pain, grief, and loss with resurrecting power. Where there is sickness of body, mind, or spirit, bring healing and hope. We especially lift up to our dear brother and sister in Christ, Dave and Trish Parks, as they both have uh, various physical ailments. We lift up Dave as he undergoes a gallbladder surgery this Wednesday, prayed that you would guide the doctor's hands 
And Lord, we just lift up Trish in her back that you would give her your strength and bring healing to it and relieve her from the pain. So we lift them up. And Lord, where people mourn the loss of relationships or dreams, bring comfort and courage to go on. And where those who serve and care and maintain our common life are exhausted, bring rest and renewal. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. And at this time, lift up any of the prayers or praises on your hearts uh, in person, or you can type them out online. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord, we lift up to you all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, all those typed out in our homes. We place them all into your hands, trusting in your mercy and love. And as your people, we are bold to pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we now continue as we sing our pre-communion verse, He is a risen glorious word. And if you need help with the music, it is printed in our bulletins. our Lord is living and he is forgiving and because he forgives he gives us his body and blood and so that's what we take and now this Easter so now you may remove your mask and we'll put them back up after communion and receiving the blessing you can take them down and then open up the top where the host is at to receive that Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat it, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. So take and eat the body of Christ, which is given for you.
And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. So take and drink the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Now you can put your mask back up as you receive the blessing from the Lord's table. Now having received the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, go strengthen this day to life everlasting, the one true faith, departing in peace and joy, moving in the way of the gospel, moving and living the resurrection. Amen. And now receive this Easter benediction. Go now as those who have met who have met with Christ in the morning of this day. Go now as those who have hearts burned within them, as the scriptures were explained. Go now as those who have been touched by resurrection to live the resurrection. And may the blessing of God the Father, risen Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, body, mind, and spirit, as you leave this place. Christ is risen. He He is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia Alleluia. and And amen. amen. And let us now sing out with joy how all the vault of heaven resounds. Go in Easter peace, serving the Lord and living the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Amen.